Race by race preview coming up for Happy Valley on Wednesday night. And we have got uh, the nine races. First race gets underway at 6.40. Paul Lully is here to talk us through the meeting. And there's a scratching in the first number 10. Mark 10 comes out. Jumbo Legend is the new number 10. Hugh Bowman rides for Casper Founds. In the first race, Viva Hunter is a three-time course and distance winner. Wood on fire. He can up that. He's a seven-time course and distance winner. Foremost, Teddy comes to the Valley for the first time. Atomic Beauty carries an extra three pounds for a senior rider. Winning seven as the blinkers off. And we go down to United Endeavours, who was a victor this course and distance two starts ago in Class 5. Beaver Hunter Paul from Barrier 7 can roll across and lead. Yeah, well, he likes to go forward, so does Gallant Crown, and Gallant Crown's drawn outside him. He's drawn eight, so I thought the two of them might come across together. United Endeavours, another go forward horse, has drawn wide. But foremost, Teddy can put himself in the race, first time here at Happy Valley, along with uh, Mr. Aladdin, who's never too far away. Wood on fire, look, he's been a little bit uh, tardy away, but from a low draw, they might try and be a little bit more positive. That is the speed map with Paul as we move on to our first replay. This is Windicator Family last time over the 1,400 metres in Class 3. Now, he does have a wide draw, Paul. The race won by Blue Marlin. He's been in strong fields. Blue Marlin, Fallon, Raging Blizzard, Galaxy, Patch and Wonder Kit in his last five. So you're stepping up to 16.50 here at Happy Valley, you'd think would be ideal. He's run, has run twice at the Valley before, but that was over the 1,200. So he's stepping up now here to the 16.50 for the first time. And that looks positive for this horse. Could be on the improve. He finished off nicely enough here. So look, I'll, I'll include him just on a minor line. I'd like to see him do it a bit more though. All right, we move on to our next replay. It's Mr Aladdin running fifth and Atomic Beauty sixth. He's been in good form, Atomic Beauty. Goes up a little in weight for a senior rider, but uh, the Avdala and Cruz combination are teaming up well. They are. They're going really well at the moment. And Look, he had his opportunity here. He was in front. Mr Aladdin, I thought, did a, another one that had his opportunity. Uh, he's, he's honest, Mr Aladdin, but he, he always looks like he needs further. He's 1,800 metres plus. He's going to go in, but um, just on a minor line for, for me, for Mr Aladdin. And that is show respect winning that race. He runs later in the program. Next up, we've got United Endeavours. Now, he's in behind the lead in this race. This was class four and he ran fourth. We saw on the speed map, though, could be a tricky run for him. I thought he had every chance here, as you say. Um, it was a really slowly run race, this one as well. They sprinted off the front and I thought he had every opportunity. Uh, drawing barrier number nine makes it a lot tricky for him, I thought. So, look, I'm happy to watch him in this uh, contest. He, look, he finished off nice. He stayed on nice enough, but he was entitled to the run he had. We'll leave him out and head to one you spied at track work in foremost Teddy for Ben Thompson. Yeah, look, I think this horse coming to Happy Valley is, is a positive. That's him the, at the, slightly at the back there, up against a high-rated horse in uh, Street Conqueror. And I, look, I like the way he's finishing up. I just on the map, I thought he might be a little bit closer in the run. Coming to Happy Valley for the first time, going by Fastnet Rock out of an Uncle Mo mare. Uh, the softer track at Happy Valley just might suit him a little bit. And he should be 40, 50 to 1 on his current form. You watch more track work than just about anyone. Do you see many do the track work in the racing colours like Street Conqueror did there? Yeah, no, they do. So, just down the back straight, the 1800 metres, they do. They do uh, do it, especially sometimes when you haven't seen them for the first time. They're, you know, sort of the first starters. And, and they're always familiar um, colours. Like if it's a Wong Choi horse, you know that straight away what, what that horse is that's come into it. All right, makes sense. Just haven't spotted that for a long, long time. Here is Selections anyway. Yeah, I'm going to go with that foremost, Teddy, uh, on top here. Uh, he's a horse that I think with... Um, uh, it's, it's open to improvement, so we'll take a chance with him at a massive price. He'll get his opportunity for a barrier four. Mr Aladdin's a little bit one pace. Now, Viva Hunter's well rated. He's one of 64, 65. He's down to 60. And Windicator Family, we saw that video of him running on. Five, six, one, two. Each way play in the first for Paul with race one, number five, a foremost Teddy. Race number two at Happy Wednesday is a class four and it's over the trip of 2,200 metres. Wonder Years is out, reach goal is in. Harry Bentley rides him for Ricky Yu. Romantic Fantasy carries an extra five pounds on that win two starts ago. Pegasus General, first look at the distance. Reach goals, one off a rating of 43. Over course and distance, sharp and bright cheek pieces and the crossover nose band off him. Palace Power's a last start class five winner. Running ahead was better last time and gets a good draw. And Sonny Baby's been back to the Chung Fa trial since his down the track performance over 1800 was a winner over that distance. Two back. Romantic Fantasy, the leader here, Paul, over Pegasus General. 
Jubilation out wider. Yeah, look, he likes to go forward Jubilation, but he's just going to overcome that wide draw. And there's a short run to the first bend here at Happy Valley. Uh, Romantic Fantasy he's led in his last couple, and he's done really well when he's led. Um, other horses, Little Ferry, um, he's drawn really wide, so I think he's going to have to go back from barrier 11 and reach goal should go back from his wide draw. Here is uh, Nick now with the trainer of two of the runners in this race, Reach Goal and Little Fairy. It is Ricky Yu. Ricky Yu, uh, race two on Wednesday night's program is over 2,200 metres. You've got a couple of runners in the race, Reach Goal and Little Fairy. Let's start with Reach Goal. He's one of only two course and distance winners in the field. He's a horse in good form. He's, uh, he's improving all the time, but the um, only thing is the um, Happy Valley track and over the trip you'll find a little bit um, difficult for him. But uh, certainly, uh, I don't think eventually the trip for him is, uh, no, won't be a problem. That run at Sha Tin 11 days ago was pretty good. The handicap has left him on a mark of 50, so certainly giving him a chance. Yeah, yeah, but the, the difference is he's running, he's running better at Sha Tin, but this is, this is a tighter track. Uh, he, he'll, uh, he'll find a little, little bit of um, difficulties. He's a bleeder, Ricky, as well. Uh, sort of, what do you have to do different in training with a horse like him that, that you know has bled in the past? I mean, the fact he's holding his form is obviously a positive as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, when, he, uh, when we first found that they, he bled, uh, we sent him back to Chung Fa and just took him, took him along slowly and gradually picking up his conditions. And uh, um, at the beginning, we, we cut his feet right down. And then again, they gradually uh, built up uh, to normal. He's got Harry Bentley on. You and Harry have got a, a really good record this season. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> this season we work, work along really well. You know? And uh, me, we just say that this English jockey is, um, is, is do well for me. They do indeed. Um, I must just ask you a quick line on Little Fairy as well. He, he looks up against it in the race. Does he? Might just be a bit tough for him. Yes, he's one of the youngest in the field and um, I find it a bit tough. But uh, he, he, I mean, he, look. It goes good, you know, if, that he, um, if he had a, a, a better draw and um, if safe ground, that he, he'll, he'll finish off well. Yeah, no, I suppose both your horses, 11 and 12, obviously not, not ideal draws. Um, good luck with them, of course, on Wednesday night, but more pressing matters ahead at the weekend. Voyage Bubble is over in Dubai. Um, what's, the, what's the latest on him, Ricky? How's he doing? Doing really well. All the feedback has been positive. Um, when he first arrived, he lost about uh, about 35 pounds, and they, uh, in a few days' time, he came back on a normal weight and been eat up, and he seemed to uh, work on the on the wrong way, you know, not the Hong Kong way, and he, he copied it really well. Uh, good preparation. He had one gallop already, and um, he's not putting a one step wrong. Um, am I right in thinking you've got Brick McDonald over there, haven't you? She used to work with the horse, and, and she's over there looking after him now. Is that is that, is that right? Yes, uh, the former Australian girls that they used to ride him at the very beginning, and these two are partners. So that even though he left Hong Kong, and uh, you still ask him, ask her to come to to Dubai and work the horse for me, you know. You've got Mikel Barcelona riding him. Um, has he managed to have a sit on him just yet, or will he have a he'll have a sit on him before the weekend? Yes, so I, I, I'm still talking to his manager if any we can find time for, um, to work him one in the morning. I want his, his maybe most likely his uh, final gallops. And um, yeah, he's, uh, he's a jockey, he's a European jockey to he can do well in Dubai, you know. He knows the track. Indeed. And I guess for you, Ricky, I mean, you must really enjoy travelling horses. To have a horse like him to, to go to a big meeting like Dubai, it's, it's an exciting time for everyone, isn't it? Yes, but he, uh, he's been travelling back to. Chung Fa, Hong Kong, and and uh, with his temperament, he got. He, uh, I won't, won't say that he he found any problem for travelling. Ricky, you there talking about uh, Reach Goal and Little Fairy? Off we go, Paul, to Pegasus General running third. He didn't have much luck in this race, Pegasus General, and stayed on okay. Running ahead. Do you want to see him do something similar? He was better, but he still hasn't shown too much. No, he hasn't. He'll get a good run, though, um, from a, an inside draw running ahead. So he'll get his opportunity. But as you say, he, he does need to improve. Pegasus General, like he hasn't run over the trip before, so stepping up to the, the distance is a little bit of a query. But he always looks like he runs on in his races. He does. That is our first replay. The second one has heaps of them to line up here. This is the win by Romantic Fantasy on the 7th of February. Jubilation 6 running ahead appears again here. 
Sharp and bright second, and of course, Palace Powell Paul has gone on to win since this race. We'll see that replay shortly. Yeah, exactly. And look, he sort of pinched a little bit from the front romantic fantasy, but he's been going really well since he's been going forward. So he's one of the major chances. I think Sharp and Bright has got a win in him very closely as well. Uh, his gear changes for him, cheek pieces and cross nose band will come off. And of course, Palace Powell's come out on one since. So all these three are legitimate chances. And we head to that replay of Palace Pal. He hasn't performed over 2,200 metres yet, and this win was Class 5. Can that change this week? Look, I, I think it can. He's been consistent. That's one thing about this horse. And he always has looked like an out-and-out -out stayer, being by Mongolian Khan. It was a really good ride here from Zach to win this race. He took off down the back, and uh, the momentum carried on, and he won nicely. He's got to come up to Class 4 and do it. That's the query. But he has been placed a few times in this grade. He's had 10 placings from his 19 start so he's not an absolute duffer at it. Who runs the strongest 2200? I think Sharp and Bright Look, we saw him almost win that race last start uh, I, I think the um, Romantic Fantasy will be tough to beat again but I think Sharp and Bright can beat him, 5 to beat 1 Palace Bowen, Little Fairy who just needs some luck from a really wide draw 5187 Sounds like it could be a Romantic Fantasy Sharp and Bright to win race number 2 to beat the one horse Romantic Fantasy The race is a Class 5 event. We come back from the 2200 metres to a distance of 1650. Class droppers, numbers 1, 2 and 3. Fortune President Blinkers again, tongue tie on for the first time. Asian 1 pacifiers with cows off, visor added. Dragon Delight cheek pieces off, Blinkers go back on. Brother Pearl wears cheek pieces for the first time. Checking out the pace here, Paul and Dragon Delight leads big two. Another good draw gets a, another good run. Look, he's missed the start in the past big two, but he has led from an inside draw. I just thought with Dragon's Light, now he's never led before. But the reason I've got him there is because cheek pieces off, blinkers back on, and a 10 pound claimer. I just think they want to try something different with him. So it just shows intent for me. So I'm sort of taking the gamble. They go forward with him. Uh, Fox Hunter Way won't be too far away and can't go wrong. He should get a nice run. He's been downgraded. Winning form around Master of Luck last time. This was a strong win, but he certainly signalled this win, Paul, with the run prior. Fox Hunter way better, but had the perfect trip on the row. Are you taking either of these two? I'm going to take, put Fox Hunter way in because I think he'll get a similar run, but he's only in on a minor line. Um, he's drawn barrier number four. So, uh, again, I think he'll get his opportunity once again. Uh, Master of Luck is just whether he can put uh, two together. Uh, that just worries me a little bit up and wait a little bit here. And with Barry 11, I've gone, of the two, I've gone Fox Hunter way on a minor line. This is the race that Master of Luck ran second in leading into that victory. Regency Happy Star fourth, Hangs Choice seventh and big two. If he jumps, as we saw on your speed map, he's going to get every chance once again. He will, definitely. It's, it's just whether he jumps. So there's always those if and buts uh, with him. But look, he, he goes well if he does. And uh, Regency Happy Star's had his opportunities, I think. He, he battled on there. But um, Courier Magic, of course, has now won two in a row. So uh, he's looking good. We've got uh, one more replay to look at. It's one of the class droppers. It's not the one, it's not the two, but it is the three. Northern Beast, Hugh Bowman on board for David Hall. Placed his first and only time over the 1650, and this is it. This was last week as well. He, he's, um, he's backed up really quickly behind Red Majesty, who's a, what, nine-time winner now, uh, Red Majesty. So the form looks pretty good. Uh, he, he's hit the line quite strongly. And as long as he gets the sort of the race run to suit, um, I think he, he, he can win this race, so it was a very good run from him. Quick back up, class drop, that's enough to get him home. Yeah, got him on top, so I, I think he can win the three Northern Beast. He's on top for me from Kango Wong, the downgrader, barrier five, he'll get his opportunity. Diamond Diamond, another horse that's coming, uh, well, having a few starts now in class five, but he's been placed twice since he's been down here. 1650 looks good for him, and Fox Hunter Way, we talked about him just on a minor line, but I think three can win, three, one, four, eleven. That's the preview for race number three. It is the first leg of the early treble. Open looking. Class four is race number four. And from the top, Run Run Cool is racing over 1,200 metres at Happy Valley. Once again, his best form is over 1,000 at Sha Tin. Golden Luck is a last start winner, carries an extra six pounds. Superb Witness has had nine trials. Both Yichong Raider and Yoda's Choice and Glory B and Lucky Quality 
have all been back to the trials since their last start. Colonels a four-time course and distance winner. Winning Heart has the blinkers off and the visor going on and Alloy King comes up with another wide draw and he's getting very close to a class drop. Colonel leads here, Paul, from barrier number two. Yeah, should easily get to the front. Golden Luck led on his ear last time, but he's going to struggle here because there are uh, there is pace underneath him. Colonel Yoda's choice. He might try and get outside the leader, which is possible, but he just might have to work a bit to get there, which will make it tough for Eloy King. Uh, Ragnar went better at his last start. He should get a nice run. Winning Hart, uh, likewise. Back to Hercules, Ekong Raider on debut. And uh, the first start of superb winners is bred for a lot further. He's had nine trials to get him bit ready. He sure has. So we'll head to the first replay, which is a Colonel running third, Alloy King. He ends up running 11th. He's just gone that one good race in this grade, Paul. That was uh, three or four starts ago. He's obviously better suited to class five, but Colonel back up in grade in this race and only just run down in the last little bit. Yeah, it was a good run, wasn't it, um, when he... Um we came back up in grade. There was plenty of money. He was backed into favouritism. Nice draw in barrier number two. It's, he just hasn't been that consistent in the past. It's whether he can do that here. Second replay is Golden Luck, who was uh, victorious last time. He ended up winning this race over Joyful Life. Drew Barrier 11. He can't draw a gate. He's had 11 11 for this win in Barry number 10 this week. But he did show he can overcome that draw and does have the early speed. He does. Um, the, the problem with the Colonel in the race, though, so he, he's going to really struggle to get to the rail. He, he sort of got his own way in front and kept going. Again, it's just whether he can do it once again from another wide draw. But look, it was a nice enough win from him, and he did, was a little bit cheeky on the line as well. He was indeed. Our next replay is Winning Heart, who's slowly been getting better. This is a good run. He makes up a lot of late ground. He's behind Hercules, who himself is not having too bad of a season. No, he's going well, the old boy, isn't he, um, Hercules? So um, both him and Winning Heart go in here. Uh, winning Heart, look, he's got barrier one. The blinker's off with the visor on. So there's a little bit of a gear change for him. But he keeps improving all the time. And he did really catch the eye finishing off um, strongly here in this race. So he is one of the main chances as well. Yichong Raiders had one start. He went out in the market at 23 to 1. We go to Chung Fa for his trial. And uh, he's tried up next to a firm who was very heavily backed on the weekend. He ran well, a firm, didn't he? It, it's hard to say. We always say this about these Chung Fa trials because there's not much pressure on um, either one of these horses. Look, it was a lot better, better for him, a nice trial from him. He's by deep field. We have seen the deep fields go well on the all weather in the past. So if he doesn't perform here, uh, he did run at Charlton on debut, and if he doesn't perform at Happy Valley, I'm sure they'll have a crack at the all weather with him. And our final replay is off to the track work, and Yoda's choice, like track work you did. Yes, he did. And uh, look, this is a horse that's he's always works well in the morning. Um, he's drawn two and one, so he's had his chances. He was beaten favourite last time, but it was definitely a better run from start one to start two, so he's definitely on the improve. As the wise old Yoda of the commentary team, you're going for them <laughs> to win race number four. I hope you only mean by personality there. But anyway, uh, yeah, he's definitely in. I don't think I look like him, I hope. Anyway, uh, he's in uh, Yoda on top, winning hard Hercules. And Ragnar was a better run from him last time. Six, eleven, nine, and 3. I wonder if we can get the camera guys to get Paul's camera in green next time he tips Yoda's choice. That has been the preview for race number four. It's the first leg of six up. Race number five, and we have a scratching here. Poan Wei has come out. It would have been some chance in this race too. Packing Wisher goes in. Jerry Chow takes the ride on the new number 11. Amazing Teens has been burning up around Happy Valley. He's had one start course and distance second behind Red Hair King. Comet Splendido's on the class drop. Dragon Star, a seven day backup. Snowlot's placed two from six course and distance. Turin Warrior, first start since January for him. California Icon, the blinker's off and the visor goes on. And yeah, boy, he's on a seven day back up down the bottom for Lyle Hewitson and Dennis Ship. Dragon Star Paul, he did a lot of early work last Wednesday, but was still not too far away at the end. It was an enormous run from Dragon Star. Uh, and they're backing him up too, so he's obviously pulled up pretty well from it. Um, amazing Teens, our last start winner, has won two in a row in the past. He went forward last time, he can go forward again. Killandini, Yearboy won't be too far away. Yearboy's the query because Yearboy, when he won his only race in Hong Kong, he led. So he's not going to lead, I don't think, with Dragon Star, but he might be a little bit closer in the run. Uh, back to Snow a lot, Harry's Hero. Capital Legend, he might be one place, he might swap over Packing Wishes coming to the race now. It just depends how he jumps. 
Our first replay is that of Amazing Teens, who we always thought was just an all-weather horse. He'd been on the Chartin turf five times and done nothing. Came to Happy Valley and he's just been flying around the smaller circuit. He's going well, isn't he? And look, he has won two in a row in the past, but he's back in trip. That's the only thing for me. I think he's a better horse over the 1,800 metres. Uh, and uh, he has been placed the 1650, but I, I just think he's better over 1800. All right, so uh, that is amazing. Teens, our second replay. This is the race that uh, Paul mentioned was a huge run from Dragon Star. On face value, he is in his favourite role. Everything's going swimmingly. What we didn't see was the work he did around the first turn. He was more than entitled to be turning it up and hoisting the white flag by now. Oh, he was 56 wide around that first turn, wasn't he? And um, almost out by the road. So it was a really tough run from him. If, if he's bounced back from this, I think he's going to be tough to beat because he, he was entitled to finish uh, to finish last in this race and he still stayed on for fourth. So it just shows how much of a tough horse he is. And Snowlight gets the Zach Purton treatment this week. He's on board for David Hayes. Zach has written him to a victory in the past. This was his trial up at Chung Fa, ridden by one of the apprentices, so would have carried no weight in it. But when he gets the race run to suit, he's normally running home just like he did in this trial. Yeah, look, he sort of lost his way in his last couple of starts, this horse. Uh, but he's been in some pretty strong um, races behind horses like Noble Pursuit, Loyal Bobo, who won on the weekend as well. Barry 11, just a query for me. I think he's going to have to go back from that draw. Looks another pretty open race, this one, doesn't it? Yeah, it does look wide open. Look, if he can get an e easy lead in front, I think um, Dragon Star can win this race. It's, as long as he's backed up well from last week, because he did have a really tough run. Capital Legend, he's close to a win. He's been going well. Turin Warrior, look, he can't have him on a win line. It's impossible. He's had 26 starts, but he's had seven seconds and a couple of thirds, so can easily throw him in. And yeah, boy, I think he'll be slightly closer in the run and he comes in with a light weight. 4, 3, 7, 12. And that is race number five. It is the first leg of Wednesday night's Triple Trio. Race number six now on our race by race preview for Wednesday night at the Valley. And this is a class four over the 1200 metres. And King Excellente last start winner carries less weight because uh, Douglas has put Ellis Wong on to take 10 pounds off. Romantic novelist is on the class drop. Happy Soul carries an extra eight pounds for his last start win. Super Tai Chi has had five trials. Talent Supremo scratched on the 14th of February with a lame left hind. Country dancer Pacifiers replaced by Pacifiers with cows and Chief the South won his best race last time when uh, running in the placings, beaten behind Solar Partner. Diamond Saws, Chief the South, and so awesome, all in good spots here, Paul. Yeah, they should. Uh, thought Chief the South will get that perfect run out, so awesome can get in behind the pace. Our lucky glory, he went well at his last start, he won't be too far away. Ernest Feeling likewise. Uh, Country Dancer's drawn wide, he'll go back. Talent Supremo's drawn 10, he's going to have to go back. And King El Salante from a wide draw looks like he's going to go back as well to see if Cheer for South has come on since that really good last start second. Nick spoke to his trainer, Frankie Law. Frankie Law, we've got a Wednesday night meeting coming up at uh, Happy Valley, of course. Uh, race six, you're going to saddle Cheer for South. Uh, a pretty lightly raced horse, but the run last time was really good in defeat. Yeah, last time he won really good. Uh, before, uh, I think last season, he looked like a go in front lead should be better. But uh, last time he just followed the horse and then he still can come strongly, so I'm really happy. He's not had much racing, Frank. I know he had that little bit of an injury last season, so last time out was his second run after a decent break. I suppose always good to see a horse run well second up after a break. Um, you must have been pleased with the way he ran, and how did he pull up after the race? Well, he pulled up good, and this time I think maybe he can lead or uh, the other horse will lead. So. Uh, doesn't matter if we can lead, we can lead. We, we, if you can lead, we just sit second. Yeah, he's got a, another nice light weight. I, I guess uh, this looks, you know, one of those typical races at Happy Valley. They look pretty open, um, lightweight, decent draw. He's he's got plenty going for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like, uh, you know, usually he got lightweight and then put the boys on. Still, uh, maybe cam one or two pounds. Uh, I think easier for 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 the horses. Yeah. And I guess when you look at the form of last time, Frank, I mean, he was beaten by Solar Partner, who was dropping in grade. So, if, if you know, in, theoretically, he was beaten by the right horse, wasn't he, really? Yeah, but last time he's, uh, I think he's a little bit wing. Yeah. So, I'm not sure, but I think he should be, should be, should be fun uh, on the, on the uh, firm, firm track, yeah. Yeah, he does look like a nice chance. Um, I must ask you about Loyal Bobo. He was good once again there. He's now gone, gone back to back. He looks like a, a really nice horse, Frankie. 
yeah, he, he looks good. Uh, uh, you know, when we just uh, take it back, take, take, take him, go to the 1400, he looks uh, uh, better than before. I think later on he can go maybe a little further, 1600, yeah. There he is, Frankie. Well, that was quite some bling around Frankie's neck there too. Looked heavy, that necklace. And it does, doesn't it? Give you bad back, sore neck. Um, on we go to Happy Soul here, Paul, and he's a last star winner. This is a Keegan DeMello riding him to victory from Barry number two. Wider draw, extra weight. He can bob up from time to time, but what about putting two together? That's a, that's a, uh, the thing, because he hasn't done it in the past. He's had 20 starts now for two wins. So I'd like to see him sort of... Uh, I, I, look, I think he'll run well, but I, I think it's, he's going to struggle to put two together. And uh, He's drawn two here. He had the perfect run. He's drawn six. So it's not too, too much um, dissimilar, is it? It's not, and that was a happy soul. This is King Excellente, who... He can't draw a gate either. He's won from barrier 12 here, barrier 9 two starts ago, but he was very sharp down the straight. Wasn't he? He showed a really good turn of foot, and he has put two together in the past this horse as well, so he can hold his form. So that's a positive. He'll get the £10 claim uh, coming in, so that'll bring him down to 125, and he carried 129 here, so he's actually carrying less weight. So, look, I think he'll run well once again. I've, I've only got him in a minor line, though. And our last replay, our lucky glory. This is a big run from him last time, second. So awesome's going to get a good trip in behind the leader. A little disappointing this night, but he was better two starts ago. And we know that King Excellente, who's finished 10th, has come out and won since. Yeah, he has. Look, I thought it was a really good run here from our lucky glory. I think he's one of the main dangers in the race. Really caught the eye of this run. He's drawn nicely in barrier number one. So I'm sure he's going to run well, and uh, he's uh, one of the main chances. That is Biddy Infinity beating him. He'll run later in the program. Cheer for South for you? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Cheer for South here. Yeah, lightweight, low draw, put himself right on the pace. I think it'd be tough to beat. Our lucky glory, uh, he's going to run well. And uh, that looks a dead set Quinella for me. 12 to beat five. Eight talent Supremo. Uh, he's trolled uh, recently around the Valley and one. And King Excellente going for two in a row. 12-5-8-1. Matthew Poon and Frankie Law for Paul to win race number six. Race number seven, a class three over the 1,000 metres and some quality about this race too with flying high a four-time 1,000 metre winner at Chartin. Great state is second up. He's trialled since running fifth on debut. Atomic Force is back in distance. Happy night, it's never missed top four course in distance. Biddy Waves is now with Pierre Rung. Shadow roll and crossover noseband off. Tongue tie goes on him. Further down, we've got Mark Comet wearing pacifiers for the first time. And California Touch, the Valley debut, but eligible also for the top of Class 4. Beauty Waves, Paul, if his trolls are anything to go by, he'll be in front for a long, long way. Yeah, he will, won't he? So um, he should be able to lead it with a new stable now as well, Beauty Waves. Heroic Mask and tuck in behind. Act of Faith, he's uh, running over the, back to 1,000 metres, but he's always uh, prominent. Happy United likes to go forward. Harmony Fire, he'll try and get outside the leader when uh, he just might have to work a little bit from that wide draw. Act of Faith is in our first replay. Here he is running second, Paul. He's consistent enough. He's yet to win in this grade, but he has placed numerous times from 10 starts. He's going to get a good trip, but he's completely unknown over 1,000. Yeah, that's, that was the thing that worried me a little bit was the uh, 1,000. So, look, I, I was happy to watch him first time over the 1,000. Uh, he always stays on nicely over the 1,200 and uh, ran really well here. Was just failed to, to get, get the win. But um, barrier one, he'll get his opportunity. He sure will. We know this horse loves 1,000 metres around Happy Valley. His name is Heroic Master. He ends up running second, Atomic Energy third. Happy United's pretty consistent and Great State will be fitter for this. Yeah, it was a good run on debut from a Great State. And of course, he did win second up in the UK before he got here. So uh, Heroic Master, uh, he really likes the 1,000. He should get a really nice run just behind uh, the speed. So he goes in. Happy United, I think, is a good chance. He stayed on well enough. And as you say, Great State was there for a long period of the race. And uh, he's a horse that is a four-time winner in the UK prior to arriving was Great State's run second behind Little Bros, who's held in good esteem out of the Hayes table at the trials since that first start. Harmony Fire, Paul, this was a race that uh, he was too good for them. It was in Class 4. He has one up in Class 3. Wide draw, gets a £10 claim. Yeah, he might struggle to get across, and if he does, he might just work a bit too hard. So that's what put me off um, Harmony Fire. But it was a strong enough win. He got the race run to suit, and he, he won quite nicely. So, um, look, he, he, there was a big gap, and as such, he's gone back up in green. 
He sure has. And our final replay is likely going to be one of the shortest priced favourites of the night. You would imagine in Beauty Waves, who's yet to win. He's had the five starts for four placings, three trials since joining the Pierrong stable. In this one, he went like a rocket. He's dropped a bit of weight coming into this race as well. And uh, so he's going to be rock hard fit coming in with those three trials. And look, he was given asked to do a little bit in this uh, particular trial. As you can see, he did it and uh, won this trial really nicely. Zach Purden knows the horse well and he'll stick with him. And this beauty waves bolting up in that trial. So let's look at the runners in race number seven. Selection time is surfs up for beauty waves. Yeah, it is. I think yeah, you can catch the wave and win here. Beauty waves, so he's on top. Heroic Master should get a good run behind. Happy United would be close up. And Great Estate, I think, is the improver in the race. 6 4 5 2. Zach Purton, Pierre Rung to win race number seven with the beauty waves. The distance class three on Wednesday night is race number eight over the 1,650 metres and Gallant waking at the top of the book. He gets a £10 claim but does have a wide draw. Toby and Prince has won a trial since his last start. Quantum Patch has the tongue tie going back on. Romantic Lau is a two-time course and distance winner. Lucky Eight has the tongue tie first time. All Beauty has the visor going on. And Escape Route coming back from the 1,800 to the 1,650 metres. Torby and Prince Pauly let up in that trial and was impressive from the front to win it. Yeah, he does, and he should lead once again. That, that's the way he races. Show respect. He was strong winning last time. He, he got a nice run. I think he'll get a good run once again. Lucky Eight, Star Contact's never far away. A true genius. All Beauty led last start, but didn't work. So I think he'll try and get cover this time. Show respect comes back up in grade with winning form and impressive winning form too. He's trained by Mark Newnham. Here he is interviewed by Nicholas Child. Mark, show respect. Uh, it was a nice winner for, for you and your stable last time out. You put a bit of headgear back on him and it seemed to have the uh, desired effect. Yeah, look, the first couple of runs he had uh, for our stable, I just concentrated on just getting him to relax. And then it was time to put the blinkers back on um, in the right race. It was the first start over this trip for, for your for your stable as well. Were you sort of of the opinion that he needed to go up in distance? Yeah, but he just needed to use himself a bit better first. So, you know, the, hence the um, uh, those first couple of runs, just getting him to relax and switch off before we got him up to his right distance with the blinkers back on. He's always he's had some decent form before he arrived in Hong Kong. I guess the burning question now being the fact he's not from 10 in Class 3, uh, where do you sort of sit as far as him going up in grade? I mean... Now that he's got that win, do you think there's there's a bit more to come? Oh, look, I think so. Look, he won with a bit of authority. Um, you know, he was pretty strong at the line. Um, he's come up with a good gait and a drop in weight. So those uh, those factors certainly help. Um, but yeah, he does he does need to uh, continue to improve. And I guess nice for you to have this connection as well with the, the team at Yulong. So I think you trained for them in Australia, didn't you? Yeah, I did have a couple of horses for them. And Mr. Zhang, he's been oh, the biggest investor in bloodstock worldwide in the last few years so um, you know, pleasing that um, he's uh, been granted a couple of permits in Hong Kong we've got another horse just coming out of uh, ready to come out of quarantine uh, today so um, be nice if we can uh, have, a, have a couple of horses here for him and a couple of winning horses here for him. He at least has a last start winner at this stage in show respect we'll find out if Paul thinks that's going to continue shortly but at the moment we need to move on to our replay here with Lucky 8 just struggled a bit over 1650 all beauty led this night Gallant Waking normally runs on Star Contact gets held up for a part of the straight Quantum Patch only fair he's better than this he just ran seventh you would imagine they'll go back with all beauty this week yeah look I think they'll try and get some cover anyway because uh, look, it wasn't a bad run from him. He stayed on for fourth, but he did set it up for these horses coming down the, down the outside. Quantum Patch, look, he sort of lost his way a little bit. I thought he would be out of Class 3 by now, but um, it wasn't a bad run from him. I'll, I'll sneak him in, but I've been a little bit disappointed in his last couple of runs. He is the likely leader in the race. This is Torby and Prince up at Chung Fa. Now, he ran eighth last time behind winning Dragon, led and faded. He does have a pretty good record over the 1650, drawn to lead from Barry number three for Alexi Bedell. Yeah, it was declared a roar of this horse, and um, it doesn't seem to worry him too much because he has been going to the front and running, running some really good races. It was a nice, easy trial, and this is what he can do without the pressure on him. So under race day conditions, just with that roaring condition, it's always in the back of your mind. 
All right, and he's one that's uh, by a big space over a Merrick to Spexo, who we normally see on a Wednesday night racing well around the valley. Who did you like in this? Yeah, it's a good race, isn't it? I'm going to go with uh, Show Respect, though. I think uh, up, I know his, his grade record is terrible, but up in grade, uh, from a uh, low draw, I think he can get that perfect run in behind. Zoom Boom, now he went a really good race at his last start. That was at Sha Tin. He wasn't too far away uh, from um, the, the fin finishing there. It was that race where her Universal Horizon uh, won, and there was about 86 across the track. He's a winner here at Happy Valley in the past, so I think he can, um, he can run well. And then Quantum Patch and Torby and Prince. 10, 12, 3 and 2. It is back-to-back -back wins for Paul. We show respect to take race 8, horse number 10. The Kowloon City Handicap, the last at Happy Valley on Wednesday night is race number nine and we jump from the 1200 metre barrier for this and Harmony and Bless race last Wednesday night. Cheek pieces off, blinkers go back on. Beauty Infinity second go in class three. Fashion Legend is drawn barrier number five at his second start over the 1200 at the Valley. California Deeply has the hood off. Elaine Warrior, four trials ahead of his Hong Kong debut. He was a three-time winner prior to arriving, make that a two-time winner prior to arriving. A King Glorioso, he was a three-time winner before getting here. He draws barrier 12. Captain Wynn, two starts for two placings, course and distance, and Joy Cumming comes into class three for the first time. Bit of speed here, Paul, with O-Liner and Harmony and Blessed noted on pace performers. Yeah, they both like to lead, and Supersonic led on his Hong Kong debut, so if he goes forward, he's going to be trap wide, I think. Beauty Infinity, now he was trap wide last time, but he'll get a lot better run here. Lucky Archangel, when he draws low, he always goes forward. Fashion Legend, better run from him, he won't be far away. Pleasant Endeavour's more of a thousand metre straight specialist. Back to King Glorioso, Helene Warrior, both uh, newcomers here to Hong Kong. Beauty Infinity is our focus ahead of race number nine. Nick talking to his rider, Zach Person. Zach, uh, back to Happy Valley we go Wednesday night. You've got some, some nice rides. Um, Beauty Infinity certainly one of them in the last. Um, victim of circumstance last time, I suppose, when, when beaten. Yeah, well, you sort of don't expect both the leaders to miss the start in a small field like that. Just took the pace out of the race and drawn where I was. Uh, nothing we could do about that, but uh, he ran well. It was a good effort. And, Hopefully he can have a little bit more luck. If we can glean the positives, I mean, he, he ran on really well, I suppose, as you would expect, and, and for that, they've put him up a pound for it officially. Yeah, uh, it was a good effort. He tried hard, he just, uh, just did a bit too much work. He's clearly a very nice horse going forward. Um, in a race, obviously, where one or two might perhaps look a little bit more exposed, you've, you've got a horse who certainly looks on a, an upward curve for sure. Yeah, he's done nothing wrong. He's continued to improve all the way through, and, you know, he's becoming more consistent and he knows what he's doing so he just needs some luck. He certainly looks at a strong chance. Um, looking back and we'll also look ahead as well, um, looking back on the derby, now you've had time for it to, to sink in I suppose. A, a super performance, I mean it was being hailed as, as one of the, the very best derbies we've seen for a little while given the, the nature of the, of the win. Yeah, whenever you have a tearaway leader like we had it always makes for an exciting race. It's a, an, an element that we don't get too often and when he was so far in front I must admit, when I come into the straight and seen where he was and knew what horse it was, I, I thought it was going to be tough to catch him. But once we started to get some momentum and get out after him, I was reasonably confident I was going to get there. And, you know, it was, it was a good feeling. It was a great race. Um, you know, the, the winner and the second horse look like they're both destined for big things. And um, you know, even a, a couple of horses that finished down the track look like they're at their right distance. Um, they'll be able, able to go a little bit higher in the ratings as well. So. Um, all in all, it was a great race, a run a good time, and you know, it was good to be part of it. Yeah, the occasion certainly not lost on, on almost everybody. I mean, Dennis thoroughly enjoyed it, didn't he, as well? Yeah, of course. It's hard to win any race here in Hong Kong, let alone a race of that significance. And, you know, being under pressure with a horse coming into Hong Kong so late and having a rush, rush preparation to get in there, you know, there are all those extra added elements to it. And, you know, it was a relief for him. It was uh, very satisfying for me and it was just good to win another one. It certainly was, I'm sure. Um, looking ahead, um, you've been engaged to ride in, in the Doncaster race that you've certainly got a, a very good record in. Yeah, so I got three of them. Four would be a little bit more comfortable, so we'll see. Yeah, he did well as a three-year-old. Uh, he's been running honest races this time in. He enjoys Rainwick. Um, he gets in with a nice enough weight, so he'll get his chance. Yeah, militarise, of course. And uh, I mean, it's a race, Zach, where 
for those that probably don't follow the Australian racing as, as closely, I mean, these types of races are, are not easy to win. I mean, they're fiercely competitive, aren't they? Well, they are. It's a big handicap as well. So you, you quite often get a, a very large field and quite often you get uh, a lot of rain at the meeting as well. So that can change things. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a really competitive race and it takes a good horse to win it. There is Zach. We move on, Paul, to Captain Wynn. Racing well around Happy Valley. On his last two starts, you would suggest a win is close at hand, but they have been very few and far between here in Hong Kong. But he does bump into a smart one in this race in Raging Blizzard. Yeah, a good run from him. Look, he's a very unreliable horse, so he's just won the one race. That was his second ever career start. He's in his 20s now, uh, start-wise, and... Okay, he's been racing well, but he's hard to, again, he's hard to have on a win line. I've got him in, but just on the place line. A place bet for Captain Wynn. California Deeply, this was his first start over 1,200 metres. This is the race where Celestial Colours and Kaholo Angel went at it up front, and he's down there on the inside. Yeah, so good run from him first up over the 12. But look, I thought this was the right race for him. He was just slightly disappointed, uh, I thought. I thought he might finish a little bit closer. But in saying that, he really knuckled down that last sort of 100 metres. And uh, it just shows that the 1,200 metres is good for him because that was his first go on it here in uh, Hong Kong. So, look, he, he's going to be a chance as well. He sounds like he's going in California deeply. What about King Glorioso? He's one of the two first starters in the race. This is his second trial. His first, he ran fourth up at Chung Fa. Just faded a little bit late in that. They rode him further back in this trial, stuck to the inside and runs home for second behind a horse called Fast Responder. I think he'll run all right. I really quite like this uh, trial from him. He's only had the two trials, but he's 1,048 pounds. So I think he's, you know, he's a horse that'll come to hand really quickly. The trial was good. Uh, he'll get back. He'll be running on. Wouldn't surprise if he sort of steals a, a small part of the pie. Beauty Infinity bounce back this week. Yeah, I think he will. I think he'll get the perfect run and uh, he can win, uh, so he's on uh, top of them. Could be a beauty day for the beauty uh, team here. Uh, fashion legend, now he's on the improve. He goes in there for second. It's a good four from him last time. King Glorioso, the first starter, and captain win. Four, six, nine, eleven, just ahead of California Deeply. All right, so there you go. So he just misses out California Deeply, but Beauty Waves and Beauty Infinity both are tipped for Paul to win at the meeting on Wednesday night. Nine races were on the A course, and the first gets underway at 6.40 Hong Kong time.